While what is going on on the Kamchatka Peninsula after the mega earthquake 8.8, it's not getting quiet. The volcanoes start rumbling. And I just released a video that a volcano that was considered dormant after 600 years of sleeping has been woken up and is erupting right now triggered most likely from the 8.8 earthquake but this is not the only one now just brand new today a thermal anomaly has been detected at the Mutnovsky volcano another one we have to understand of course Kamchatka there's lots of volcanic belts over 160 volcanoes 29 ish of them have been considered active I guess since yesterday we have one more after 600 years of being not active and it's surprising which volcanoes are now showing activity after the earthquake. So there would have been other candidates that have already been somewhat on the brink. But no, now we have Mudnovsky. Volcanologists, guys, in Kamchatka have raised the alarm. Thermal anomaly that is indicating increased internal volcanic activity. Well, thermal anomaly heat that needs to come from something and we know if it's a volcano we know who's the culprit they have recorded this right at the mutnovsky volcano and as a result the volcano has been assigned the yellow aviation color that level of alert is the signal for elevated unrest the seismic conditions across the whole Kamchatka Peninsula remain tense. We're seeing these high magnitude earthquakes still in the high six range, close to the seven range. So tense conditions in this area and due to this continuous sequence of aftershocks, it is very, very tough to really get accurate seismic readings at a volcano because is all that trembling coming from magma rising to the surface or is it coming from all these aftershocks that's why right now what the danger is in this area right now that there is no reliable forecasting system for potential eruptions it's just not possible it's rumbling and shaking too much these aftershocks i've shown you the 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 maps it's absolutely crazy so we can really call this since the mega earthquake we have episodes of seismic activation at volcanoes and right now especially at mutnovsky and we have heightened tectonic activity in other parts of kamchatka X as well. So right now the authorities, I say, stay away from Mudnovsky. They're saying visiting this volcano is extremely dangerous and strongly discouraged. But there is more. We have another already erupting volcano that I reported about yesterday. Now it's lava flow is threatening a glacier and the local tourism therefore so lava and glacier not good guys because that can trigger that can have a domino effect so klitschevskoy it's also on the kamchatka peninsula in russia significant lava flow is coming down from klitschevskoy and it has extended close to three miles and it's rapidly advancing right now to the Bogdanovich glacier which of course because of the heat is now experiencing intense melting so this presents a growing danger not only for the environment in this area but also for tourists that are currently hiking around on the nearby Tolbachik volcano as I just mentioned, so many volcanoes in the area. If you look at the aerial pictures, it's plop, 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 one after the other, right? So the potential right now, guys, this is what we have to understand for catastrophic events such as volcanic mud flows, lahars could disrupt travel, but also leave visitors stranded or worse, captured in some areas. And 
Klyuchevskoy, it's, it's quite a big guy. It's the tallest now active volcano in Eurasia. It's a towering landmark. Basically, it has this conical shape, almost perfect conical shape. And the summit crater is massive. It is almost 700 meters in diameter. And as we've seen in the videos, we can have eruptions and lava flow not only from the crater, but also from the slopes. So the slopes of the volcano are dotted with numerous craters and cinder cones. Klitschewsko had already erupted in April 2025. And since then, the volcano's activity has escalated and so have the earthquakes in the area. And it has escalated particularly after July 30th, after the 8.8 .8 mega quake. So now experts are closely, very, very closely monitoring the situation as the lava continues to descend towards the melting glacier. And this rapid ice melt could trigger large water flows and lahars. Um, they could travel down the Stadionaya River, which gives them a pipe basically to be very, very fast. So then these fast moving water currents could flood parts of the Kozirevsk Petropavlovsk Kamchatki Highway. That is crucial infrastructure, crucial transportation route, probably also for all these military installments in the bay. We know that the tsunami that hit the Kamchatka coast, the east coast, has damaged some areas of the military port there for nuclear submarines. We've seen the satellite pictures. So should this scenario occur, it's summertime, lots of tourists. It could leave tourists that are on the Tolbachik volcano isolated for quite a while for a extended period because the waters would continue to rise for quite a while. So the Kuchovsky volcano's ongoing eruption has raised alarms across the region, as you can imagine, because um, this is quite unusual that it's accelerating so much. The region is known for its active volcanic landscape. Don't get me wrong. There is a number of active volcanoes that are scattered across the Kamchatka Peninsula and the area faces frequent threats from volcanic hazards. So also the tourists should be aware of that. But this increasing volcanic activity right now after the earthquakes, especially the threat of lahars and lava flows, definitely underscores the risk to both local populations and the growing number of tourists who keep visiting Kamchatka each year to witness these natural wonders that the region presents. But this eruption of Kuchevskoy is not the only volcanic event that is sparking concern. I have previously mentioned it. The Krashenikov volcano, situated on the eastern part of the Kamchatka Peninsula, not too far from the 8.8 .8 epicenter, has awakened after more than 600 years of sleeping. So it, after the mega quake, shortly after Krashenikov erupted, has released an ash plume, really, really impressive picture, has reached up to five miles in altitude, has raised significant alarm for air travel. The Kamchatka Volcanic Eruption Response Team, yes, they have that. Well, good that they have this. If you have so many volcanoes, they have um, declared the orange warning level, especially for air travel. So if there's orange level, it tells airlines uh, don't fly 
in the region because of the potential that volcanic ash could disrupt your aircraft engines. And if an aircraft does have engine failure, this is not good. So officials are urging the airlines to avoid the area until the conditions improve. But will they if we have more stuff popping here? So, so far the ash has drifted over uninhabited areas, but the ongoing eruptions from multiple volcanoes um, emphasize these challenges that the local authorities are facing right now with managing this increased volcanic activity, potential volcanic crisis on the Kamchatka Peninsula. Uh, because, you know, not only the active volcanoes that are already there, they're threatening the peninsula's infrastructure and local communities. But they pose a direct risk to their valuable tourism sector, and that is it's a poor region. They need the tourism. And they were so happy. The tourism sector has seen an, a rise in international visitors that are drawn to the peninsula's natural beauty and volcanic landscape. But if this turns into a danger for them, not all of them might want to come there. And then fire and ice makes these volcanic eruptions with glaciers that poses an additional danger if the glaciers melt, because that's a lot of weight on volcanoes that are quiet right now. So experts have warned that the retreat of the glaciers could trigger additional seismic activity or potential eruptions. So there's reduced pressure not only on the volcanoes, but also on the tectonic plates, guys. Yes, this is a real thing. So this reduced pressure on the tectonic plates that is caused by this melting ice may increase the frequency and the intensity of the earthquakes. And uh, this is a phenomenon that experts say are they are observing this globally, where in some areas the loss of ice mass has led to shifts in tectonic dynamics. So what they're also saying, and that is not good, that the current volcanic eruptions in Kamchatka could be exacerbated by this melting ice, and that would further increase the likelihood of additional earthquakes to the ones that are already happening there. And now as this lava flow edges closer to the Bogdanovich Glacier, this shows the unpredictable and volatile nature of Kamchatka's volcanic and seismic activity. It's becoming increasingly evident right now. So definitely for those that are planning to visit the region, the risks have increased significantly. We have to say that. So as we speak, we're seeing more earthquakes off the southeast coast of Kamchatka and we see a further shift of quakes towards the Kuril Islands. We just had another one there, way above magnitude 6. Yesterday, we had magnitude 6.7 struck off the southern tip of Kamchatka. Epicenter was at, at a depth of 20 kilometers, like 15 miles. Still shallow enough. Um, and they issued a tsunami alert again shortly after it was lifted. But this tells you they're taking this serious. Then another magnitude 6 quake happened further north. And then lots of magnitude 5 and magnitude 4 quakes were also detected traveling southwest along the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. So if you even look at the Google Earth pictures, you see these like snakes. These are these trenches and you see the red dots traveling along this. And then just a few hours ago, another 6.2 shallow, only at a depth of five miles, roughly eight kilometers and epicenter located 150 miles south, southeast of Severo Kulitsk on Paramushir. So that has placed it in a location that is the Kuril Kamchatka Rift. And that rift had not previously been hit by earthquakes. So is there a domino effect going on? 
because this quake is roughly 500 miles away from the magnitude 8.8 .8 epicenter, from the megathrust earthquake. Some people are raising the questions. I just said domino effect. Are these really aftershocks? Or is there something else going on? Has not only the megathrust earthquake revived volcanoes, but also revived other tectonic monsters or threats? This could be an indication that these strong tremors that we see elsewhere are not necessarily aftershocks, guys, but rather a further tension relief along this snake-like rift valley. And there's also volcanoes. Volcanoes everywhere. Of course, along these rift zones, we have volcanoes. There's a lot of them in the south of the Siberian Peninsula. And there's also the volcanic arc of the Kuril Islands. So far in this area, the volcanoes seem to be quiet, not activated by this rumbling. No unusual activity so far, but that can change. Constant rumbling can always make things brittle. Magma likes to choose the way of least resistance. In southern Kamchatka, we have volcanoes such as Smutnovsky, Goreli, that are latently active. On Paramushia, there is Mount Ebeko. I've reported about that one as well. That is one that we would expect to be stimulated by strong tremors, but nothing so far. So that especially the volcanoes and the central region of Kamchatka, that region of all places have become increasingly active, was not quite so obvious and, and came as a surprise. So that also raises the question, what else is to come? Do the scientists really know what's going on? So Krashenikov, after 600 years, Kuchevskoy increasing its activity, not only sending ash clouds out up to eight miles up into the atmosphere, but also these lava flows, we talked about it. Lava flows almost reaching the base of the volcano. So we have to monitor this area, guys, because there could be more to come. Very, very interesting. So stay with me. If you want to know what happened to California because of that tsunami in Crescent City, the largest ever recorded wave that hit a U.S. coast. Watch the video in the end screen, but there's so much stuff. If you want to support the channel, guys, check the links in the description. Fill me up with coffee to keep me going. Right now, I only have water. That's a scandal. And uh, click the join button to become a member for behind the scenes stuff. And uh, thanks for your super skies. You are absolutely amazing for watching, for sharing, for liking. I hope to see you soon in a second. Click here. Bye-bye.